for every given set of these squats, your quads are going to get substantially, noticeably more f***ed up, pumped, sore, tired, you name it, than they would for the other kinds of squats. And that's what makes these squats optimized for muscle growth. And if you do them, it's going to make you a hero that the world sings about and writes poetry about for the rest of time. Or worst case, you just have bigger quads, which is almost the same thing if you think about it. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for RP Strength, and today's video is about how to squat for muscle growth. Seems like a strange video. I thought we've been doing videos like this on the channel for a long time. Ah, but we have not. Here's the thing. You can get a lot of great tips from various sources online about how to squat. Juggernaut, an amazing platform on YouTube and everywhere else you can find them. Chad Wesley Smith and his fellows over there have tons of amazing technique guides on how to squat. Chris Duffin with Kabuki, amazing guides on how to squat and how not to squat. There's Squat University, which puts out really, really good information in, in, in many cases, and so on and so on and so on. And all these sources are awesome to teach you how to squat. But here's a problem. Many people think that squatting is a thing that has one, maybe not correct way, but universal checklist way of being good, whereas in reality, depending on what you're squatting for, the technique can be considerably different for optimization purposes. Here are some reasons you could squat, and each one has slightly or significantly different ways of squatting, different techniques. First, you can squat to build leg strength for weightlifting, which is why weightlifters, competitive Olympic weightlifters, quote unquote, that's why they squat. You can squat in such a way as lets you squat more in powerlifting competition, low bar, wider stance, the whole deal. You can squat in such a way that is just for the gym and just high bar squatting, but you just want to squat as much as possible. So you're going to be doing a lot of tips from Chris Duffin, keeping the ribs down, so on and so forth, bracing really hard, etc. And lastly, you may be squatting for the purpose of building as much muscle in your legs as possible. And the cues I'm going to give you are cues you don't see in a lot of other places, because most other places talk about squatting in such a way that it keeps you healthier, that keeps you safe, and makes you stronger, either for weightlifting, powerlifting, or just the gym. But they don't address squatting for muscle growth. Some of these cues that I'll give you are going to contradict some stuff you've heard elsewhere or done before. And that's almost always not because these sources are wrong and I'm correct because I'm Dr. Mike, God damn it. It's because I'm teaching how to squat for growth and most of those folks are like, oh yeah, hmm. we're doing this for strength and health and mobility. For growth, it could very well be different, and that's okay. There are different ways to squat, and this is how you squat for growth. Now, there's nuance here. You can always change these because you don't feel them in a certain way, and everything has to be adaptable at the end to you, the individual. But I'm going to give you 10 basics of how to set up and execute your squat technique so that you get the best growth possible on average, and it's up to you to go from there and make the thing more individualized to your needs. Number one, we have a checklist of things we pretty much want to do all the time, which means as soon as the bar hits your back, you walk it out, you set up, all the way until that last rep, you want all these things to be true at all times. First, you want your chest up, shoulders back. You want your heels on the ground and just around shoulder width, sometimes just inside, some at shoulder width, some just outside. Very, very wide or very, very narrow squats, usually are not as conducive to muscle growth. You want your toes to be pointed out for comfort, usually in line with your knees. You're going to be able to find out what works better for you if you kind of relax your toes, squat up and down and sit in depth and kind of move your toes out and in until it feels really awesome and that your feet aren't getting curved in. It might surprise you that your toes can be pretty far out and that's the best feeling situation. What I don't want you to do is arbitrarily put your toes really far out and then it feels weird or really far forward and then it feels weird. Find what works best for you and that's not that hard to do. And your knees should be coming out for comfort. You don't want knock knees, knees touching together at the inside. You also don't want to be spending all of your cognitive bandwidth trying to push your knees out to kingdom come, whereas knees just out a little bit feel great and hit your quads like it's really, really awesome. So chest up, shoulders back, heels always in contact with the ground, no going up on your toes, toes out for comfort, knees out for comfort, and then every rep is going to have that as an ingredient. Point number two, as you bend your knees, you want to push your hips back if you just bend your knees, you're going to end up on your toes, and that's bad news. So your hips back a little bit as you bend your knees. Before you start the descent, as you break, you want to breathe in and brace, but with your chest and ribs up, not down. Chris Duffin and his folks will tell you ribs down. That's for maximum strength in the squat. But for exposing the quadriceps muscle the most, we want our chest up, ribs out but with a brace. So chest up, ribs out, <gasps> breathe in and hold your breath a little bit. Number four, as you travel downwards, remember you're going to tilt your hips back and then you're going to start the downward descent. As your hips travel down, 
So long as your heels are still on the ground or producing force, you want your knees to travel as far forward as possible. This may be an insane tip that you've never heard before. You're like, what the fuck? I thought we we're supposed to be pushing our knees back. I thought that if your knees got over your toes, the world got cancer or unicorns were all slaughtered. Something terrible, I remember, clearly happens. It turns out that the more your knees go over your toes, as long as you're still producing a lot of force with your heels, you get more quad hypertrophy. Your quads are exposed. They're asked to produce the vast majority of the tension for the squat, and they're put into a maximum stretch at the bottom. All good things. So as soon as you tilt your hips back, break at your knees and start descending down with your hips, make sure your knees come forward and out as much as humanly possible so long as your heels are still on the ground. A controlled descent is critical. You don't have to go super slow. Two seconds is totally fine. And as many as five seconds is totally okay, but don't just ploop down and out. You want to milk that eccentric phase for the most growth and the most safety and the most mind-muscle connection so that as you're descending, you're making sure your knees are going forward and you're feeling your quads because if you went really, really fast, you'd be like, I don't know what I felt where. That was too quick. Point number six, if you're doing a real slow eccentric, take many breaths on the way down. Chest is up, core still tight, but if you're doing a five-second eccentric, <sighs> up just like that. If you hold your breath the entire time, holy fucking shit, you're just going to pass out and that'll be bad news for everyone. Now, if you're doing a two-second eccentric, you can hold your breath, breathe out on the way up, no problem. It's dealer's choice because you're going to be doing hypertrophy loads, which doesn't mean sets of three. It means sets of five to 10 or more. You're going to be able to do little pulse breaths, keep the oxygen coming, keep the car carbon dioxide flowing out of your body so that you're not just turning this into a breath holding exercise. If you're squatting for strength, you hold your breath the entire time through every rep. For hypertrophy, there are times where you can take many breaths and it actually lets you get more reps on the back end without your you know, passing out being a limiting factor. What do you get when PhD sports scientists collaborate with pro bodybuilders? The most effective muscle growth training app ever made. Get yours now. When you get down to the bottom, you want to stay as upright as possible. This is insanely counterintuitive, and very difficult to do, and it'll take lots of training for it to be more intuitive for you. At the very bottom, your chest stays completely up, and your upper body is as upright as possible, your knees really far forward. What does your body want to do when you get down? It wants to creak over. You get down, and you kind of just bend in. Don't do that. Stay as upright as possible. More of the tension will stay in your quads. It'll be safer for your back, less axial fatigue, the whole thing. It's just benefits. Point number eight, highly consider, though it's not mandatory, a one to two second pause at the bottom, letting you really get that stretch mediated hypertrophy that's so magical and awesome. And because you're taking a pause at the bottom, it reduces the reaction forces in the amortization phase when you go down and up. And that means it slightly enhances your safety and reduces your injury risk, which is fucking awesome. Now, number nine, pop back up quick and athletically, but not with max force. Some people jump off the fucking ground when they squat. For hypertrophy, you just got to get back up there to start the slow ride again. So definitely pop back up. You don't want to go intentionally slow on the way up. Some people see that RP slow bullshit and they think, oh, it's slow everything. And they do slow eccentric. We're like, yeah, that's great. And it'll do slow concentric. And like, you need to just push the bar, right? So squat up quick, back down much more under control. Squat up quick, back down much more under control. At the top of every single rep, at the very least, you're going to want to breathe out and breathe in and then you go back down. Does that mean you can do some in and out breaths on the way down? Yes. Do you have to? No, that's all up to you. Find the breathing strategy that works best for you. This 10-step guide is how you're supposed to be squatting for muscle growth. If you implement it, two things will happen. One, you won't be able to squat as much using this style as you would the other styles, because the other styles are optimized for squatting a lot. So expect that. Don't be surprised. Like, oh, fuck this. This sucks. I can only use two plates and not two and a half. Uh-huh. But the other thing you can expect is that for every given set of these squats, your quads are going to get substantially, noticeably more fucked up, pumped, sore, tired, crampy, you name it, than they would for the other kinds of squats. And that's what makes these squats optimized for muscle growth. And if you do them, it's going to make you a hero that the world sings about and writes poetry about for the rest of time. Or worst case, you just have bigger quads, which is almost the same thing if you think about it. Folks, I know you have questions. Shoot them in the comments below. And if you have people in your uh, friendship circle that think they know how to squat, you send them this video and say, see, I told you you were dumb, comma, Ken. Why are you friends with people named Ken? What are you, Barbie? Anyway, see you guys next time. <laughs>